With the growth in software as a service, an application has been deployed in the cloud. Many organizations are moving to cloud-based providers for identity access management. Most SaaS applications can then integrate with these identity providers, enabling users to access multiple apps using a single organizational user and utilizing single sign-on across any number of applications. Federation protocols enable this authentication across multiple applications without requiring the passwords be maintained by the different parties, something that's very important for maintaining user integrity. For the user, this solves the challenge of juggling multiple usernames and passwords. And for the organization, application access can be controlled and appropriate security criteria put in place. Many organizations will also have internally hosted cloud or on-prem applications and will want to enable external access to these also, utilizing the benefits of single sign-on, while at the same time protecting the application from unauthorized requests. Kemp Loadmaster's identity access management functionality enables seamless integration with identity providers so that on-prem applications can be protected through pre-authorization while at the same time integrating with single sign-on. This is true even for applications that only support legacy authentication and authorization protocols or may not have any authentication or authorization at all. So let's take a look at an example. If we consider a scenario whereby an organization has traditionally used on-prem applications and these were controlled with Active Directory Domain Controller. With more and more applications moving to the cloud, the organization has decided to adopt a more hybrid approach. Some applications are now SaaS-based, hosted on the internet, and the organization has decided to use Azure Active Directory to enable users use their organization login to access these. But at the same time, legacy applications hosted by the organization in this case on site, are also required to be available remotely. So let's see how we can utilize Loadmaster with Azure AD to implement single sign-on for these applications. So here I have an example of a HTTPS application called Legacy App. This has two real servers and utilizes the Loadmaster for load balancing. As you can see here, I can access it using the URL. The Loadmaster is configured to perform SSL acceleration without re-encrypt, so it's accessed over HTTPS and the two application servers are operating over HTTP. So I can access legacy1.bargly.com and also legacy2.bargly.com. So this could be a pretty common configuration of an application that perhaps has been used internally within an organization. Now what, uh, what I want to go through is how we might integrate this with our Azure Active Directory to protect the application through pre-authorization and enabling single sign-on for the user. So shown as my Active Azure Active Directory um, account through the user portal, I've previously configured this to use Azure AD Connect which enables me to synchronize users from the on-site Active Directory up to Azure. So to complete my setup, I select New Application, and I can search for Kemp in the Azure App Gallery and select Kemp Loadmaster Azure AD Integration. I can subsequently change the name to my, sp my specific application name here, and also there's an option to change the logo. So I'm going to click proceed and add here. And once added, there's a couple of steps to set this up. So the first one is to assign users and groups. So let's go through this quickly. In my, in my case, as I mentioned, I'm using Azure AD Connect. 
So I should be able to access my users here. I'm going to add some users to be allowed to use this application. So I'm just going to add a few. Okay, so now I've added some users, uh, nine in total. Uh, any one of those users will be able or will be allowed access the application. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is set up the single sign-on. In order to integrate with the Kemp Loadmaster, we're going to use SAML. You'll see here there are some fixed identifiers. I'm going to click no here because I'm going to change all of these. So I'm going to go into my basic SAML configuration and what I'm going to do is update this to use my application URL. In my case, legacy.bargley.com. The entity ID is a unique identifier that is used to identify the identity provider, which in this case is Azure AD. The next thing is the reply URL. So this is what will happen when someone tries to log into the application. They will be redirected to Azure AD, or in this case, or in the case of IDP initiated, they may ha have already been in Azure AD, and this will be the page that they will be redirected to. Uh, it'll include the necessary c credentials in order for them to log in. So in my case, this is just going to be the URL of the application. Finally, the sign-in URL is going to be the same. So what this is, is um, the URL that would typically be accessed if someone was going to the application directly. Another option, relay state, is where you may need to send users to a specific page after login. Um, in my case, I don't need this, but this can sometimes be maybe a landing page that users are typically sent to after login. Okay, so I'm going to save those settings. And next up, I'm going to configure the user attributes and claims. So this is quite important because this includes the SAML signing certificate that Azure AD will use and it is required that this is trusted and configured on the service provider side, which in our case is the Loadmaster. To simplify configuration, I'm going to use a download button for this. What this allows me to do is simply upload an XML file that includes all the necessary attributes. Um, I'll also download a certificate from here, and this is going to be uploaded onto the Loadmaster enabling the Loadmaster to validate the SAML assertion is actually signed by Azure AD. Okay, so that's pretty much most of the configuration on the Azure side completed. Next, let's have a look at the Loadmaster side of things. The first step is to set up the SSO config. So I'm going to set up a new client side configuration and I'll call this SAML AD. As you may have guessed, we're going to use SAML as the authentication protocol. For IDP provisioning, because I was able to download the XML file, I'm going to click Metadata File, and I'm going to choose the file from the downloads. As you can see, this is an XML. And what's great about this is once I import it, it'll fill in all those fields. So it makes that, it, it, that a little bit easier. The next thing is the IDP certificate. So in order for the Loadmaster to be able to use and trust the SAML assertion from Azure AD, it's going to need the Azure AD certificate. So I'm going to go into Intermediate Certs, choose the file that I downloaded, in this case legacyapp.ceor. I'll call it Legacy SAML Cert. I'm going to hit Add Certificate. And then I'm going to go back to my SSO and select this certificate from the dropdown. Next up is the, um, the SP Entity ID. So just as I did on the IDP side, I'm going to give this a unique name, legacy.bargley.com. 
And then for the SP signing certificate, I'm going to use my global Bargley certificate. As this is globally signed, it means I will not need to upload this certificate on the IDP site. And that's pretty much my SSO configuration completed. So in order to actually use this single sign-on domain, I need to assign it to my virtual service. So I go into the VS and I'm going to enable ESP. I'll set the client authentication to SAML. And then I'm going to use the SAML AD SSO domain that I just created. The allowed virtual host I'm going to set to legacy.bargley.com because that's my host name. The allowed virtual directory, I'm going to allow all with the wildcard. I'm not going to do any excluded directories. And next up is an important field, it's the log off string, because this allows us to configure a page that when accessed will instruct the load master to end the user session. In my application, the log off button maps to a URL logout. So finally, in our case, we're going to do the server authentication mode to none. Uh, KCD is another option here. So what this means is no authentication is required by the application servers. Okay, so now that we have configured our application, let's um, take a look at this in action. So I'm going to navigate to my URL, in this case, legacy.bargley.com. So this is going to hit the virtual service on my load master. And what you'll see there is straight away I got redirected to a Microsoft or Azure AD page. So what I'm going to do is log in with one of my users. And I can, you can see there I get prompted to stay logged in. So what this means is if I click yes, it'll keep me logged in even when I leave this application and then can use these credentials to log into other apps. So I'm just going to hit no here for this example. And you can see here I am redirected to the legacy app and I'm allowed login. And then if we go on to the load master and go into our SSO, I can look at my sessions and I can see that user has logged in and the source IP and so on. Okay, one other thing to show is if I hit the logout button, and you will remember when we configured this application, we specified a log off string. When I hit the logout uh, button, you'll see that once again I'm redirected to Azure. So what's happened here is the client session has been redirected to Azure AD to basically alert Azure AD that this user is no longer logged in. And you can see there it mentions to close the browser window and so on. So what I've just demonstrated is how access to a hosted application, in this case my legacy app, can be protected using pre-authorization by the loadmaster through enforcement of login before allowing traffic hit the application. This is integrated with a cloud identity provider, in this case Azure AD, resulting in the hosted application being accessible through a single sign-on alongside all the organization's other applications.